Sheila Williams had a bright future, a boyfriend she adored, and a strong faith in God. So why did she commit suicide? Several bobby pins on the floor and some gold under her fingernails help provide the answer. Nineteen-year-old Josiah Ward lived a life of luxury in Grand Rapids, Michigan. He was a millionaire many times over and seemingly had everything a man could want. But he paid a very steep price for his fortune. Six years earlier, Josiah's aunt was driving him to his 13th birthday party. On the way, she lost control of her car and crashed into a tree. Joey was in the front seat. He went through the windshield and impaled himself onto the tree. Josiah's aunt survived the crash, but Josiah's eight-year-old brother, who was riding in the back seat, was killed instantly. Josiah was badly disfigured. That is the reason why he had the severe facial lacerations, a head injury, and uh, multiple fractures to his face. The insurance settlement made him an instant millionaire. He got a judgment of $3.5 million, and it was to be paid in installments. The money just could not, was not enough to, to undo the damage that was done because kids in school were calling him Scarface, and he had a hot temper. After high school, Josiah started dating 20-year-old Sheila Williams, an unemployed hairdresser. Soon, Sheila became pregnant with Josiah's baby. But he had told her anyway at one point he was gonna marry her, cause she told me, and I said, you just met him. Sheila had also experienced a spiritual awakening. She started to attend church again and sang in the choir. I'm so happy to see her just come back and renew her faith in Christ. So she came back and pastor asked her, where are you gonna be? She said, from now on, right back there in the choir along with my mom and dad, where I belong. On Labor Day in 1998, Josiah called police to report an emergency. 911 emergency. Laying here in a pile of blood. Okay, all right, are there any weapons nearby? Yes, hold the gun in her hand. According to Josiah, Sheila had killed herself. Okay, where did she shoot herself? It's in the head. Is she breathing right now? She looks. No, she's not bleeding. Or she's not breathing no more. When police arrived, they found Sheila dead on the kitchen floor with a single gunshot wound to her head. The gun was next to her body. Josiah told police they argued about Sheila's pregnancy. Josiah wanted her to have an abortion, but Sheila wanted to have the baby. Josiah said he left the house to buy cigarettes. When he returned, he saw Sheila kill herself. He said she did not say anything at that point, just shot herself. And I was like, what? Oh my God, and I was like, no, what, what? And I, I was just speechless. I didn't want to believe it was true until I got all the way here, you know, and I see all my family members and everybody here. And I just knew it was true. I just knew it was true then. Studies show that suicide is extremely rare among African-American women. As a group, they comprise less than 1% of all suicides. It doesn't mean African-American female can't commit suicide. It just means that it's an unusual event 
uh, quite rare and uh, certainly would warrant additional consideration of other possibilities. And Sheila's autopsy revealed some surprising news about her pregnancy. Josiah Ward and Sheila Williams were a classic example of how opposites attract. Josiah was lonely and withdrawn, Sheila warm and outgoing. She was the center of everything, fun, energetic, warm. And she was the type, if you came to the door, she would greet you with a hug and a smile and big embrace, welcome you in and make you comfortable as she could the whole time you was there. Sheila and Josiah did have a common bond, a troubled past. Sheila was a high school dropout struggling to find work. She had been pregnant twice before and lost both due to miscarriage. Josiah's problems included his disfiguring car accident and his inability to handle the multi-million dollar financial settlement. He spent lavishly on luxury items and often loaned money to his friends. He was paying child support for two children he fathered with two different women. There's a old saying, you know, song, women, and drink, and that's pretty much what he spent it on. The money was corrupting him. He was already an angry kid, and the money was corrupting him and drawing certain kinds of people to him. I think that he gave money to a lot of people and probably did not get the love or respect or whatever it was he was looking for in return. At Sheila's autopsy, the medical examiner confirmed she was killed by a single shot that entered the left side of her head. The trajectory actually appeared to go into her left cheek, lower left cheek, um, just above the jaw, and actually went in an upward motion um, into the left side of her brain. The preliminary lab test showed gunshot residue on Sheila's hands, a finding consistent with suicide. Toxicology tests revealed Sheila's blood alcohol level was 0.09 which in some states is considered intoxicated. And Sheila's autopsy revealed a surprise. Despite her previous claims, Sheila Williams was not pregnant. I don't know whether she was just claiming she was pregnant um, and she knew otherwise, or if she just, if, if, if she really thought she was. Josiah's lawyer claims the pregnancy was a scam and Josiah was the target. Sheila Williams was part of a group, I would say five to six people, that were uh, set out to victimize Joey Ward for his money. And they would use uh, whatever means they could do it, befriending him, having sex with him, making false claims of pregnancy. The man who alleged the scam was a prison inmate who claimed he overheard Sheila discussing it with his cellmate, who was Sheila's former boyfriend. Yet Sheila's family insists she was pregnant. Yeah, she told me that she thought she was. A lot of thoughts started running through my head, like did she have an abortion, did she have a miscarriage, and she didn't tell anybody. You know, I didn't know what to think. She could uh, miscarry at a very early stage in pregnancy and may not have even been aware of it, yes. To fully understand the shooting, Investigators asked Josiah to explain in detail exactly what happened when Sheila died. We asked him to portray or reenact how she was with the weapon. And so we asked him to stand up and we took a photograph of him doing that. And just the way that, that he said that the angle of the gun was at. Almost immediately, investigators saw inconsistencies. Josiah denied there had been any physical altercation, yet investigators found evidence to the contrary. We saw that Ms. Williams had a weave that was forcibly pulled out of her hair, and we observed several bobby pins that were strewn about. Investigators also found blood spatter on the kitchen floor that wasn't from the gunshot. It happened when the gun hit the floor. That spatter would not have been created if she had shot herself and dropped the gun immediately after shooting herself. That's because there shouldn't have been a pool of blood on the floor when the gun dropped. To recreate the blood spatter at the scene, forensic experts dropped a gun into varying amounts of horse blood from different heights. 
The only way they could reproduce it was by pouring almost a gallon of blood on the floor. And tests revealed the gun fell only a short distance into the blood, not from head level. The reenactment of the blood spatter test did prove that the gun was actually dropped at a height of between 18 and 24 inches, and then it was actually dropped into a rather large pool of blood, which um, disputed Mr. Ward's claim. This proved that Sheila was bleeding long before the gun hit the floor. Photographs taken just after police arrived showed the blood was not fresh. It was coagulating almost. It was darker and coagulating. It was starting to, to pull and to get darker. That doesn't happen right away. And a neighbor came forward saying he heard a gunshot several hours before the ambulance arrived. They thought they heard something similar to a gunshot at about 2.30 or 2.45 a.m. The police 911 call didn't come in till about 4.47 a.m. So there was a span of about two hours that are really unaccounted for. But if Josiah Ward murdered Sheila Williams, why was gunshot residue found on her hands? Twenty-year-old Sheila Williams lay dead in Josiah Ward's kitchen from what he said was a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Forensic evidence collected at the scene contradicted several aspects of Josiah's story. Josiah claimed Sheila held the gun with her left hand, but investigators didn't believe it. We discovered that she was right-handed and she wasn't familiar with the weapon, so for her to shoot herself with her left hand, first of all, was would have been quite odd. The bullet had entered her left cheek and traveled upward, lodging in her skull. The medical examiner confirmed what Josiah had claimed, that the gun was several inches away from Sheila's face when it went off. This gunshot wound had gunpowder stippling, stippling being the unburned grains of powder that come out the end of the barrel when the shot is fired, indicating that the that the barrel was not in contact with the skin and was probably several, inch, several inches away uh, from the skin when the shot was fired. But Dr. Start said this seldom, if ever, happens in a suicide. So physically it may be possible, but when one considers all the circumstances surrounding the case, uh, certainly to a reasonable degree of medical certainty, this case is best classified as a homicide. Using a plastic gun, Dr. David Start demonstrated the kind of wound he would expect from a suicide. Most are, are in the temple, uh, intraoral in the mouth, underneath the chin, occasionally the center of the forehead. Very unusual for other locations of the face. Assistant Prosecutor Kelly Konsky was convinced Josiah Ward murdered Sheila Williams but she knew his defense would argue it was suicide and point to the gunshot residue on Sheila's hand as proof. It's a good defense, you know, especially when you have one gunshot wound and someone who's saying that they are, are pregnant and they're a teenager. I mean, all those things kind of point out, well, maybe she killed herself. As a matter of routine, crime scene technicians swabbed both Sheila and Josiah's hands after the shooting. Prosecutors sent those swabs to Skip Schwobel, a nationally recognized expert in gunshot residue analysis. When a gun is fired, the burn of the primer escapes the firearm through any available opening in the form of a cloud or a plume. The vapors or gases solidify into tiny particles, which are deposited on the hands, clothing, and the immediate proximity of the firearm. Schwobel used a scanning electron microscope to analyze the particles on the swabs. The bright particles are gunshot residue. Overall, the gunshot residue-related particles on Sheila Williams' hands uh, was approximately uh, five. This was significant. But Schwobel says a person firing a gun would have much more residue on the hands. The amount on Sheila's hands could have come because she was near the gun. 
Schwobel next analyzed Josiah's hand swab. Josiah Ward denied handling the gun, shooting the gun. Obviously, if we find a large concentration of gunshot residue or particles, it's gonna show us that he was in proximity to the shooting of a gun or, in fact, did shoot the gun. And that's exactly what Schwobel found. Overall, the particle population on uh, Mr. Ward's hands was larger than the particle population on uh, Ms. Williams' hands. He was the one that actually handled the weapon and discharged it during the commission of the crime. But Schwobel found something on Sheila's hands besides the gunshot residue, something completely unexpected. He found gold particles, lots of them. There were over 3,000 particles on one of the hand samples several uh, on the other hands, uh, getting close up to around 5,000 particles. Handling a gold watch might leave 100 gold particles, so 5,000 particles was significant. We ran it by a lot of people, and no one could pinpoint it. We thought, well, maybe it's something specific to the gun or the ammo. We just weren't sure. If the particles on Sheila's hands were from the gun or ammunition, it would give weight to the argument that Sheila pulled the trigger and killed herself. Needless to say, prosecutors and Josiah's lawyers all wanted to know where they came from. Skip Schwobel wanted to know the origin of the thousands of gold particles on Sheila Williams' hands. Investigators naturally asked if she worked in a jewelry store or wore expensive jewelry. The answers were all no. He wanted to know from us what, where this could have come from. You know, what did she do? What was she wearing? Anything else in the house, um, in the area that could have left off these particles? Investigators were stumped and were about to add this to their list of unanswered questions when they looked again at the photos of Josiah Ward taken on the night of the murder. We realized the shirt Josiah Ward was wearing had gold threading or gold embroidered into the shirt. Armed with a search warrant, police found the shirt in Josiah's home and sent it off to the lab. Schwobel compared the gold from the shirt to that on Sheila's hands. You see an incredible amount of detail. Uh, we're looking at the size, the shape, the morphology or surface te texture of the particle. The microscope magnified the particles from Josiah's shirt 7,000 times, and they were identical to the gold particles on Sheila's hands. It showed us that uh, Josiah had had physical contact with her at the time of the murder, which he had flatly denied. I always like this saying, a picture's worth a thousand words, and I think in this case it really was. Prosecutors think Josiah believed Sheila was pregnant since he had already given her money for an abortion. And on the night of the crime, Sheila admitted she didn't use his money for that purpose. Is she having an abortion if I don't want one? Well, where's the money? Since he didn't want to support another child, there was an argument that got physical. Sheila's hairpiece and bobby pins flew to the floor. The gold on Sheila's hands from Josiah's shirt proved there was a fight. During the struggle, Josiah fired a single shot from a foot or two away, killing Sheila instantly. Over the next few hours, Josiah tried to stage the scene to make it appear to be a suicide. He had to drop the gun on the same side as Sheila's head wound, even though she was right-handed. And by the time he dropped it, he did so into a pool of blood from only a foot or two away, proof of yet another lie. By the time police arrived, the condition of the blood proved the deception. Just hours before Josiah Ward's murder trial was to begin, he confessed. He indicated that she initially consented to getting the abortion, but then uh, later indicated that she did not want to go through with it. 
which probably increased the tension that led to the initial confrontation that led to her death. I certainly believe the forensic evidence was a large part of why Josiah uh, confessed to the crime and why he subsequently pled guilty without a trial. Josiah said he sincerely believed Sheila was pregnant. If he had known the truth that Sheila wasn't pregnant, quite possibly there wouldn't have been the altercation. In August of 1999, Josiah Ward was sentenced to 25 years in prison for second-degree murder. Makes me feel better just knowing that he didn't kill her and get away scots free because you watch the news all the time and you see it. A lot of people, they, you know, I don't think they get what they deserve and I was actually surprised. With this forensic evidence, this strong forensic evidence, um, we got a confession and a conviction and a murderer's in jail.